Section 6.4, solving polynomial equations. We're going to solve equations by graphing and by factoring. By graphing, we've learned to solve polynomial equations by using the zero method. And the new method that we're going to learn is the intersection method. So the steps for the intersection method are right here, but let's go ahead and just jump right in. For this first equation, we're going to solve by graphing. And for the intersection method, the way that you do that is you take this side and you would put that into y1 in your calculator. And you take the other side and plug that into y2. So if I go to my calculator, again, you should get your calculator out and follow along as we're doing this so that you can practice. And if you have questions, you can ask in class. So after you plug it into y1 and y2, then hit zoom 6 for a nice standard window. And that gives me my first graph and my second graph. Now, since we are solving this, notice that um, I'm solving for x because that's what's in my equation. And we're solving by using the graphing intersection method. So if I do second trace, instead of doing number 2, we're doing number 5, which is intersection. And if I scroll using my left and right arrows, and hit enter one, two, three times close to the intersection, notice I get x is equal to negative three. Now, I don't need the y value again because notice in my equation I'm only solving for x. That means if I plug negative three in for x here, here, and here, both sides of my equation would be equal to each other. Now, I'm not done though because I have an intersection point here and here that I also have to find. So second trace, you have to do it again, intersection, scroll, close to that intersection using your right arrow, hit enter three times, and you get negative one, and then second trace intersection over here, enter, 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 and you get one. So these are my three solutions to this equation. So that's the new method that we're learning. We have done these problems before, except for when we did them, we did the zero method. So if I want to do the zero method, then of course my equation has to be equal to zero. I would take this um, to this side, or I could take this all this to the other side. So I'm going to take the x by subtracting it to the other side, and then negative 3 to the other side by subtracting it. So this would be x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 3 equals zero. I'm going to show you that you can get the same answers by using the zero method. So if I do minus x minus 3, I have the same equation. I just changed it by setting equal to 0. Now if I hit graph, notice I'm only going to have one graph showing up. And I have 1, 2, 3 zeros, because remember the zeros are the solutions to your equations, which are the x-intercepts. So now I do second trace, and instead of doing intersection, now I'm finding the zeros. And this is when we scrolled over, and the left bound was something below, enter here. Right bound would be up here, enter, enter. Notice I get negative 3, which was this one. Second trace, 0. I would do the same thing here. Left bound, enter. Right bound, enter, enter. And I get my second zero, negative one, and second trace, zero, enter, 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 and I get one. So notice you get the same answer, at just a different method of solving. So let's go ahead and do B. So for B, in my y equals, I have x cubed minus 19x and y1. The other side would go in y2. And then I would hit um, graph. I already did zoom 6, so we're good. So now for this graph, that first graph that just graphed, and here's my second one, it's really hard to tell what's going on in my graph. So the best thing to do would hit zoom and then zoom out, which is number 3, hit enter, and then to actually zoom out you have to hit enter on your calculator. That gives me a better look at what my graph is going to look like. But now the problem is it looks all scrunched in here. That means my x values are too far out here and here. So I'm going to want to change my window by going to the window. Maybe doing negative 10 to 10 would give me a better idea. So if I hit graph, now that looks a lot better for my first equation. My second one was a parabola. So this is my second one. And I can see an intersection here, here, and here. So that means I would want to do second trace intersection. I'm going to have to do this three times. So first scroll over to the way that first intersection is, and then hit enter one, two, three times. So I get x equals negative 5. And then I do second trace intersection. Enter, enter, enter. 
I get x equals negative 1, and second trace intersection, enter, 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 and my third intersection is 4. So that would be using the intersection method. I could also do the zero method by taking these to the other side, so it would be plus 2x squared minus 20, and then hit graph. I notice that I have the zeros that I'm looking for now, so if I did the second trace zero method, I'll just do this one right here, enter, oops, and notice that these zeros, this was negative 1, this one should be negative 5, and this one's going to be 4. So that would be if I did the zero method. So I would pause the video and see if you can do C on your own using the intersection method, and then unpause it to check your answer. So we have x cubed minus 2x squared, and then y2 would be negative 3. For this one, make sure you use the negative right here and not the minus sign, otherwise it's going to say error when you graph it. So if I graph this, I probably don't have a good window because I zoomed out before and I changed it, so usually I should always reset it by doing zoom 6, which is the standard window from x values negative 10 to 10 and y values negative 10 to 10. So here's my only intersection. Notice it doesn't hit the graph anymore. It's the second trace intersection. Enter, 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 and I get x equals negative 1. So that second one, y equals th negative 3, which is the horizontal line right here at negative 3. So that would be my solution, and I would only have one solution in this case. So that's one part, which is solving by graphing. The next part that we're going to do is solving equations by factoring. If I want to solve by factoring, these are all the techniques that we've learned. Um, we can factor a trinomial by looking for factors of the last term that add up to the middle term or use the slide and divide. We also learned the difference of squares, the difference of cubes, and the sum of two cubes. These are the formulas in case you forgot. And we also learned to factor by grouping when we have four or more terms. Um, and we're going to do some practice of this. So the zero part right here, we'll do that in class. So let's just skip over that for now and go to the back side of your paper. All right, so factoring and solving the polynomial equation. So we're going to use the sum and difference of cubes and then factor our equations for these. Now, for this first one, it says solve each equation, and we want to find all of the roots. Now, if I solve this first equation, like let's say you thought you could do x cubed and then take the 8 to the other side by subtracting it, and how do I get rid of a cube? I take the cube root of both sides, and since it's getting rid of odd power, I don't do the plus or minus. And the cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2. Well, that's OK. That gives me one solution. However, I'm missing two solutions because I didn't factor to solve this equation. Now, for this, um, the fundamental theorem of algebra states that if you have a polynomial degree n, that means that you should have n zeros. So if this is a polynomial of degree 3, that means that I should be able to find three zeros. I have one real zero that I found. That means probably the other two are imaginary. In order to find them, I have to use my factoring techniques. So remember when we're doing the diff or sum of cubes or difference of cubes, so the sum of cubes, a cubed plus b cubed, when you factor, you get a plus b, and this would be a squared minus ab plus your last term squared. And if this is the difference of cubes, this would be minus plus plus. So we have to remember those techniques. So for the first part, what cube gives me x cubed? Just x. And then this would be plus 2. And then when I factor, um, I would get my first term squared minus the 2 multiplied by each other and my last term squared. So 2 squared is 4. We're solving, so we've got to set it equal to 0. So x plus 2 equals 0 would give me my first answer, which is negative 2. That's where I got this one right here. So x equals negative 2, but I'm not done. So I have x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 0, and I have to solve this. Well, I can't factor it because it doesn't factor, which means that if I can't factor something that's quadratic, I'm going to have to use a quadratic formula. So remember your, your quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's what we're going to use. My a value is 1, my b value is negative 2, my c value is 4. So when I plug this in, x equals negative negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 all over 2 times 
my a value, which is 1. So now I'm going to simplify this. So remember, simplify what's underneath the radical first. So x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is um, 4 minus 4 times 4, which is 16. So 4 minus 16 is negative 12 all over 2, and then of course we can simplify negative root 12, so just to show you negative, or sorry, root negative 12 is i root 12, which then that becomes, um, this is 4 times 3, so this is equal to 2i root 3 when I simplify it. Because 2 goes into this 2 here and this 2, I can simplify this. 2 goes into 2 um, evenly once, so 1 plus or minus i root 3. These right here and the negative 2 that we found earlier, those are my solutions. So I have two, three solutions, which makes sense because this is a polynomial of degree um, 3, so I should have three solutions. So now we're going to go ahead and solve the next one. So for this next one, I'm also going to have to use factoring. We have two terms. I know it's going to be the difference of cubes. So x minus 125, the cube root of that is 5. And then your first term squared plus multiply the 2. And then your last term squared. So then here, x minus 5 equals 0. So x is equal to 5. Here, we would have to use a quadratic formula for the next part. So a is 1, b is 5, c is 25. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 1 times 25 all over. 2 times 1, so when I simplify this, x equals negative 5 plus or minus, this becomes root negative 75 over 2, and then negative root 75 simplifies into negative 5 plus or minus 5i root 3 over 2. 2 doesn't go into 5 into either of those, so this would be my simplified answer. So those are two solutions, and this one right here would give me my third solution. So you guys should pause it to see if you can solve the last one on your own, and then unpause it to check your answer. So for this last one, again, I can use the difference of two cubes. So the cube root of 27 is 3, and what cube gives me x cubed? x. The cube root of 1 is 1. So then to your first term squared, so 3x squared would be 9x squared, plus multiply the 2, so 3x plus my last term squared, which is just 1. So 3x minus 1 equals 0, so I get x is equal to 1 third. That's one answer. Now I need to find the other two using the quadratic formula on this part right here. So my a value is 9, b is 3, c is 1. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, notice I always put this in parentheses when I'm substituting those values in, over 2 times a, so x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, when I simplify what's underneath the square root, I get negative 27 all over 18. Negative, um, root negative 27 simplifies into, so we have negative 3 plus or minus 3i root 3 over 18. 18 goes into 3 here and here, and since it goes into both of them, the same number, which is 6, I can do um, negative 1 plus or minus i root 3 over 6. So these are two solutions, and this one right here was my third solution. So now I found everything I need with a polynomial degree 3. Now, that's solving cubic equations, so let's try to solve something that's higher than cubic, so quartic. Now, if I want to solve these, we know how to solve quadratic equations, but I can't use a quadratic formula on something that's not a quadratic equation. And for this, notice that um, this is not quadratic because it's to the fourth degree. So since it's to the fourth power, um, I know it's going to be quartic. Now, in order to solve this, I can solve by factoring by using substitution to help me. So I can say let a equal x squared. 
Now, if I do that to solve this, this is really x squared squared because 2 times 2 would be x to the 4th minus 2x squared minus 8. So that means I can substitute in for this x squared right here, a. So if I do a squared minus 2a minus 8, well, doesn't this look familiar? We have factored problems like this. I need, I have a trinomial, so this would be a and a since it's minus I know that my signs have to be opposite. Factors of 8 that add up to 2 are plus 2 minus 4. I can't leave this as my factored form because if I multiply this out, it does not equal what my originally started with. So I have to use this and substitute x squared back in for a. So I'd get x squared plus 2 times x squared minus 4. If I multiply this out, then I would get my original equation here. But I'm not done because this right here, I can still factor. I cannot factor this one anymore because I don't have the sum of squares, so that stays x squared plus 2. This one, though, is the difference of squares, x minus 2 times x plus 2. So this right here would be my factored over the set of real numbers. I'm not finished, though, because it says to factor and solve. So if I want to solve this, that's when I would set equal to 0, and I would solve each binomial. So x squared plus 2 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. So I'm going to make this smaller. So if I solve x squared equals negative 2, how do I get rid of the square? Take the square root of both sides. And remember, when you get rid of even power, you need plus or minus and that would become x equals plus or minus i root 2. When I solve this one right here, I would get 2, and this one you would get an x value of negative 2. So notice that I have 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions, which makes sense because this is a polynomial degree 4. So why don't you pause it and see if you can do b on your own. So for b, I don't have to let um, a equals x squared. If you can see to factor it without doing that, that's fine because I know this would be an x squared and this is going to be an x squared. I need opposite signs. Factors of 27 that add up to 6 are going to be 9 and 3, so plus 3 minus 9. So that you can, if you can see to factor it without doing what we did in the other one, that's okay. So then here, x plus 3 does not, or x squared plus 3 does not factor because we don't have the sum of squares, but this is the difference of squares right here. So this right here would be my completely factored form over the set of real numbers, but I'm not done because I want to solve. So x squared plus 3 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, and x plus 3 equals 0. Here x squared equals negative 3, x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 3, so x is equal to plus or minus i root 3. Here I would get x equals um, positive 3, not negative, and x is equal to negative 3 here. So 1, 2, and these are two solutions, 3, 4, so Drury 4, I have four solutions, so it checks out. The next part is just some review of stuff we did in the last section. It says use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find p of a. So you should be able to pause this and do this on your own and then on pause it to check. Now remember, if I'm doing p of a, if I were to write this as a linear factor, that would become x plus 3. So really, I'm doing my synthetic division by dividing um, my polynomial by x plus 3. So in my box goes what I'm trying to look for, which is negative 3. I have to make sure this polynomial is in standard form with no missing 0 placeholders. I'm missing 0x, so I have to plug, put that in when I do my um, coefficients. So this would be 2, 6, 5, 0, negative 45. And remember, when we're doing synthetic division, we add and we bring down our first number here. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. 0 times negative 3 gives me 0. Um, 0 and 5 is 5. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. 0 plus negative 15 is negative 15. And negative 15 times negative 3 is 45. And this gives me a remainder of 0. Now, my answer when I divide by x plus 3 then would be 2x cubed plus 0x squared, which we don't need, plus 5x minus 15. Now, because my remainder is 0, remember that means that x plus 3 is a factor of the polynomial equation when it, you end up with a remainder of 0. Um, it also means that when I do p of negative 3 and plug negative 3 into all of these x values, and you could just plug it into your calculator y equals and then look at the table to see what negative 3's value is. And you would see that you would get this would be all equal to 
a value of zero. If it didn't equal zero, either you plugged it into your calculator incorrectly or you did your synthetic division incorrectly. So that is using the synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find P of A, which is what we did. So this is the remainder theorem here. So I'd have to show both of those. So make sure you bring all this with you to class. And then, like I said, we'll talk about that last part that we didn't get to from the notes.